Hello, I'm Joe Silvera, and we're here at the Silvera Jewelry School in Berkeley, California with Beeducation to show you how to polish your jewelry up to a beautiful finish using power tools like flex shafts and dremels. And I'm excited to show you how to do this, how to make your designs better with the kind of finish that you want them to have so you can get rid of scratches, fire scale, even remove patina from the highlights so that you have beautiful contrast on your pieces. Now we're here in a big studio space inside of a building full of other artists and sometimes they're noisy. So you'll hear doors slamming or little things off in the background. But stay focused so I can show you exactly how to use your power tools for the greatest benefit for your jewelry. Thanks, let's get started. The first thing we need to talk about is safety. How to properly use your tools without hurting yourself. So number one, wear safety glasses. I know it sucks to wear safety glasses over your regular glasses. So think about getting prescription safety glasses so you'll actually use them. And you can even tell your optometrist what you're doing so that they can adjust the prescription so you can see more clearly at your normal working distance. But your safety glasses should have side shields and be a little bit thicker in case something happens. Now, the next thing is that you need to make sure that this tool is away from anything it can wind up, like your hair, clothing, or loose jewelry. So make sure all that stuff is tucked back and tied back. Uh, when you start it up, make sure you know where the tool is, that it's in your hand in a neutral position, that it's not in your lap against your apron or against your clothing where it can tie stuff up. And I know it's tempting that you don't want to stop what you're doing and uh, you know turn off the tool when you need to scratch your head, but believe me, it's not a good idea. So keep the tool out where you can see it when you have to do anything else and safest of all if you need to stop or concentrate on something else or if anything goes wrong just turn it off take your foot off the pedal or turn off the motor so that the tool is off and you can take care of what you need to take care of and i know you can be tempted to polish stuff like loose chain or loose jewelry with a flex shaft or a big polishing motor but until you get proper training you need to be extremely careful with that stuff because it can wrap around the tool and your finger and you can get hurt so until somebody shows you how to do that properly don't polish loose chain let's get started on some jewelry which tool do you want to use for polishing you have a couple of choices you can use a dremel or you can use a flex shaft machine. Let's take a look at the Dremel first. So this is your Dremel in its most basic form. And there's advantages and disadvantages. One advantage, it's a little less expensive than the flex shaft, especially if you're just using it like this. If you add a lot of accessories to it to make it a better tool, like Dremel sells its own flex shaft accessory that you can use to add a smaller handpiece onto this. So you can hang up this motor and hold a smaller handpiece. That adds money. If you try to add a foot pedal to this, that's a little bit more. If you add a better chuck, that's another little bit. So you can kind of end up for the, for the money for the same cost as a flex shaft. Uh, if you add all those accessories to the Dremel, you're basically spending the, the same amount as buying a flex shaft. Now, it's smaller, but you have to hold this in your hand uh, when you're working. So you're holding the weight of the motor while you're polishing. Um, the speed dial is here. The only way to turn the Dremel on and off is to turn the speed dial on like that. So that is a little bit inaccessible while you're working with the tool if you need to adjust the speed. And then Dremels come with um, standard. They come with what's called a collet. Uh, it's almost like a pin vise on the end, and that only holds certain size shaft tools. Um, if you really want to make the Dremel into a more versatile tool, you'll take that collet off and its little cover, and instead install the Dremel chuck accessory. Uh, what it does is it gives you a real drill chuck, uh, excuse me, drill chuck on the end of the tool, and it will close completely down like this, or open completely to, so that you can use different size bits conveniently. Now obviously I have a little bit of bias. I really do like the flex shaft better. So let's take a look at the flex shaft right now. Your other choice for a power tool is a flex shaft machine and that's what you're seeing here. It has a larger motor that's more powerful and has more torque so the tool can keep moving even at slow speeds. It comes with an actual flexible shaft so this runs the power from the motor down the shaft and into a smaller more comfortable handpiece like this. Uh, 
And it comes with a foot pedal so that you can control turning on and off the motor with your foot, which makes it more convenient when you're changing bits or if you need to stop intermittently while you're polishing or stone setting. So for all those reasons, this is really why you see most jewelers having a flex shaft at their bench or their workstation. It's just a much better tool. And you can get a Fordham or there are other models out there as well, uh, economy models of flex shafts that start at lower prices. So for about the same cost as getting a Dremel, you could buy an economy starter flex shaft that's still a more powerful and better tool for polishing and jewelry work. Let's meet the polishing bits that we are going to use. Now, I've selected bits that are as home friendly and clean as possible. These bits are called silicone polishing wheels. They're made of a rubbery material that can flex. So they have a little bit of flex to them. They are from coarse to fine, white, coarse, black, medium, blue, fine, pink, extra fine. They come as unmounted discs like this that need to be put onto a screw mandrel. This specifically is a screw mandrel that is reinforced to help prevent it from bending while you're working with it. To mount one of these wheels onto the screw mandrel, you undo the screw. If you've managed to keep hold of the little washer, you want to put that on one side like so. That's going to go on the side that goes towards the shaft of the mandrel. So I'm going to slip that on top like so. and you screw that in. That gives a little bit of a buffer between the mandrel and the bit that you're working with. So that's how you mount it so that you can use it in the flex shaft. These bits are very good at removing metal, polishing away defects like extra solder, fire scale, um, deep scratches, and as you go upwards they start producing a satin and then mirror finish. And um, because they're a little bit harder than some of the other bits, the finish is brighter and more burnished looking. Okay, let's meet some of the other bits. One of the least expensive bits that you can use for polishing is a split mandrel. It's a simple steel cylinder that has a slot in it so that you can thread sandpapers to use them as rotary tools. So these are normal hardware store sandpapers. You want to be able to buy them by specific grits. So look for 180 grit, 320 grit, 600 grit. As those grit numbers get higher, the sandpaper gets finer and so does the finish from the sandpaper. Now, the way you use it is the sandpaper gets threaded into the slot like so. Usually when you're putting it in and it's in the flex shaft or the Dremel, you'll be looking at the sandpaper like this. The right hand side of the paper is short and you curl that around a little bit and you can even start it by wrapping it around the mandrel like so. And that will get it started for sanding. These bits are called radials, and they're fantastic pieces to work with. They're almost completely dust-free when you polish with them, and they're very flexible, so they can get around round wire, uh, details, texture without removing them, and, and yet still polish into the recesses. So in order here, from left to right, they go from coarse to finest. This is white. Uh, equivalent to 120 grit sandpaper, red equivalent to 220 grit sandpaper, blue 400 grit, peach which is considered 6 micron, and green 1 micron. Now you might not be used to things being rated in microns for sandpaper but as you get very high up the scale they are rated in microns and the less number of microns the higher the polish but that's not important. The important thing is that it's peach and then green. So white red, blue, peach, green. You might want to just write that down at first so you remember which order to do them in and the more you work with the radials the more you'll just have it memorized. But they're fantastic tools. Now this is what one radial looks like. It's pretty weak by itself. In fact you'd probably never use just one radial by itself. Instead you would stack three to six of them on a screw mandrel. Now they make a nice wide brush for working your metal. The way that you stack them onto the screw mandrel is important because they have to go in the right direction. If they're going in the right direction, when the tool is turning, 
you'll go with the direction of the bristles like this so that they'll flex properly against the metal. If you're going the wrong way, you can see how the bristles bend back and they'll start breaking off and destroying the radial bristles. So this is correct, this is incorrect. How do you know how to put it onto the screw mandrel? Well, if you look at the radial and you're looking at it like this when you're loading it, you want the points to be going to the right. So let's grab a screw mandrel. And when I load this and put it onto the screw, like so, and look down on it, then the point should be going to the right. The other way you can remember is if you look closely at the back of the radial, you can see there the logo says 3M. And that has to point down towards the shaft of the mandrel. Then have all the layers with the points going in the same direction and you have loaded it correctly. These small polishing bits are called pin polishers and they're fantastic for getting into small detailed areas like inside jump rings or the recesses of stone settings, basically anywhere where you can't reach with either the silicone polishing wheels or the radials. So they come in two sizes. These are the three millimeter pin polishers and these are the two millimeter pin polishers. Each one needs its own special holder. So these holders fit the three millimeters, three, these holders fit the two millimeters. The way the holder works and what these pins look like when you buy them is that this part unscrews like its own little chuck and the polishing pin itself looks almost like a pencil lead or an eraser that you load in there but it's made of polishing abrasive. So you can load that into the holder like that to the height that you want it to stick out and then just tighten this down and then you can load that into your Dremel or flex shaft. Now, the order of the colors are the same, whether you're using the two millimeter or three millimeter pin polishers. So it goes from black, medium grit, to brown, fine, green, extra fine, and the same here. Black, medium, brown, fine, green, extra fine. To load the flex shaft, you use a chuck key to open and close the chuck. So the chuck key inserts with the little bump here into the hole, and then that will turn the gears of the chuck to open and close the keys like so. So let's get a bit to put in there, like this. And then you can turn the chuck to tighten it like that, turning the key. Now you can see that the bit doesn't go in as far on the flex shaft, but that should be nice and secure and tight. Oh, there we go, a little bit tighter. That should be nice and secure when you're done. To open it, you turn the chuck in the opposite direction. So it's righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. When using power tools, you need to brace your hands properly so that you can control the tools and you need to use the bits right so that they're working correctly and efficiently to polish your metal. So let's start with your hands. It's best to brace your hands against something like this bench pin so that you can control how far forward and sideways you're moving. And you can also then kind of focus down to this almost like potato peeler motion as you're polishing like that. So uh, you might notice that I kind of dock my thumbs together so that I can lock my hands together. But if you're trying to do this up in the air, where you're holding one piece and another piece separately, it's very hard to apply the tool exactly where you need it to go. So a common bad scenario for not being able to control the tool would be if you had a stone here and you're accidentally running a coarse bit over and over on that stone. So brace yourself so that you can control where it goes. Now. Whenever you're using the tool, you bring the bit off the edge towards you like this. You don't want to go off the edge away from you because usually that will make the tool grab onto the edge and then suck its way down and around onto your fingers. So always start in the middle of the piece and come off the edge towards you and just turn the piece as you need to to get to different areas like that. Whenever you work with bits, you want to work with the bottom edge of most bits. 
most bits right here on the bottom. You don't work on the face of the bit here. It's going to wear through it strangely and break through all these bristles, for example. So you work on the bottom edge here. So when you're applying it to your piece, it's along this edge like that. Now, if you have scratches on your piece that you can see, like that scratch right there, you want to sand and polish across the scratch. That way you can really see when the scratch disappears. If you're going in the same direction as the scratch, then eventually the texture from this tool and what's left of the scratch are going to blend in, making it look like the scratch disappeared, but it didn't. When you go up to the next finer grit, you'll see the scratch is still there. So always try to, to polish across scratches. The same thing applies when you go from a coarse bit to the next finer bit. So if I go from the white 120 grit radial to the red 220 grit, I want to turn the, the metal and the bit a little bit so that I'm going even at an angle across the texture from the previous bit. So always sand across the lines you left from the previous bit, just in the same way that you sand across the, the scratches, if any, on your piece. Now, the biggest thing that I can advise you on, because I see this all the time with students, is to slow down, apply pressure, and use the tools at the correct speed. I'll watch students start to learn how to polish, and I'll see them use the bits too quickly. They're moving this fast over the whole piece. And they'll go through the entire range of bits from coarse to fine, and it still looks scratched up and uh, hasn't gotten any sort of beautiful, brilliant luster on it. And that's because they're going too fast. So you slow down move just like this, work areas slowly to allow the tool time to polish and move into all the recesses and polish the surface. You're allowing the tool to rotate and do the work for you. Um, use pressure. You can see how the bits, the, uh, the bristles on this tool are flexing as I push into it. Right? So that I'm applying an even amount of pressure as I work to help the tool to polish. And then use the correct speed for the tool. For example, radials like a medium high speed so that they can work effectively and efficiently. So let's see that on the back of this piece. See the difference? Now let's go on to seeing a workflow on some real pieces. So we're going to see the sequence of steps that you uh, would take to polish something like this argentium ring. So I'm starting with the split mandrel and I'm starting with 320 grit sandpaper. This is the medium grit. In general, I start with the medium grits to do what I call pre-polishing. I'm trying to get rid of fire scale and scratches and establish a nice, even surface to then take up to the finish that I want. For example, a high polish. So when you start up the split mandrel, you want to use this at low speed and allow it to just wind itself around the, uh, the mandrel. And then you can insert it inside the ring like this to polish inside the band. So it's very good at polishing inside ring. So that fits really well inside the ring for polishing it. Now, you hold the ring on the outside like this. And you always want to be looking at the side that you're polishing. So don't polish on the side towards you that's hidden. Polish on the metal that you can see. Now, I don't want to use the sandpaper on anything delicate, like the rounded wire here or uh, edges where I might scratch stuff up that I don't mean to because it's a little bit blunt. So I'm going to switch to the 600 grit and save those edges for other tools. But this will remove the scratches from the 320 grit. Um, 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 um. 
if you're polishing with the paper and it gets a little bit worn down and isn't working anymore, you can just tear off the little bit at the end, get back to fresh paper, and keep going. Now we're going to switch to a black silicone wheel. And the black silicone wheel is the medium grit from the silicone wheel family. And it does a good job of cleaning up join lines, extra solder, all sorts of defects like that. Ah, well that's good to see. So this was chucked a little bit incorrectly. Do you see how it's wobbling? So we want to stop, open that up, put it centered into the chuck keys, like so. And that's more like it. So I'm using this now to get rid of the join line along this edge. So you can see how clean and satin finished that edge is now. And this is about as dusty as these tools get, which is pretty low in comparison to um, the rouge and Tripoli and bobbing compound that's used traditionally in jewelry polishing. Now the shape of the wheel, the shape of this edge matters when you're polishing. If this was a knife edge wheel with a sharp edge, it could indent and mark up the surface while I was trying to polish it. So using a square edge for this flat surface is better. If the shape of the edge of the wheel is incorrect, you can change it. You can modify it by using something like the back end of an inexpensive file to grind the shape to a, uh, a different profile. Now, this gets a little messy. So this again, this is kind of where it gets dusty. But basically, I just put a 45 degree angle on this tool now. So that makes it easier to get deeper into the ring and to work on areas like this, close to the edge. I'm getting rid of that scratch that was there and the scratch on the other side. Now I don't want to do any of these details again because this is still taking away metal so it could remove the roundness of the wire or any of the details that I want to keep, but it works really well on those surfaces. Um, as they get used up, they get smaller, and these are handy for reaching inside of rings and things like this to get to areas that you want to clean up. So don't use them up, set them aside and start a new wheel so that you can use these for small spaces. After doing some pre-polishing on this ring, uh, now the surfaces are more even for me to come in with the um, radials. Now, I don't necessarily want to start with the coarsest radial. If I finished with the medium grit silicone wheel, then the, the marks that left behind are kind of fine. If I use this wheel, then I could end up putting more scratches into it. So um, I'd rather start with a more medium grit. So I'm going to take this white 120 grit wheel out. I'm going to start with the red 220 grit. This is more like the medium range in the radial family. So remember, pressure, move slowly, and higher speed. Now what you're looking for are all the lines from any of the previous tools or scratches to be gone and to just have a nice even finish, even texture from the wheel you're working with. So you need to tilt the metal and look from different angles to see if you can spot any scratches. Be careful when you're trying to reach into recesses or using the tool in general that you don't bump into either the screw at the top and scratch your piece while you're working or hit the chuck and also scratch it. Now the reason I'm using the radials for this part is they're very good at sanding the surface. They are not good at removing um, 
solder or deep scratches um, without just basically sanding everything. So you use the black silicone wheels, the sandpapers and stuff to kind of establish the surface and then these will do the rest of the finishing. They're also good at getting into recesses and around wires like this. You turn the wheel so that it's going in the same direction as the recesses so that it gets down in there. Don't forget to do the sides. Now you have to do everything. And the radials will flex their way around all these details on the top. So now I'm going to keep going with the radials in order. So the next one after the red is the blue 400 grit. As I polish, I'm looking for anything that might have been missed by a previous wheel and taking note of it. And the nice thing with power tools is you can just go back and polish that little part, blend it back up to where you were, and then keep going. Remember to turn so that you're going slightly across the lines you made from the previous wheel. The metal will get a little hot while you're working. This is normal if you're using the right amount of pressure. As radial wheels wear out, they get smaller and nubbier like this. They still work, but they're just not quite as effective as reaching, for reaching into the recesses, and they might get a little bit slower. So at this point, you might want to have a fresh wheel handy just in case. So now I'm going to finish up with the green radials. Now if you've been doing a good job, it just gets faster and faster with each stage of the polishing. So some of the tight areas in here couldn't be reached with the radials. So I'm going to use the pin polisher to just brighten them up a little bit. But to make it easier to get in there, I'll use that same trick with the file to grind this down to a finer point. So this is a um, two millimeter pin polisher. And that does a nice job of getting into those tight areas. Well, here framed in my dirty fingers is a sterling charm that's been uh, oxidized, been patinaed with silver black. And now I want to bring back the highlights. And you can do that with your power tools. So this is the pink polishing wheel from the silicone family, which I want to use because it's hard, so it won't get into the recesses, unlike the radials, which might. So I can take the pink wheel and use this to bring back the highlights. There we have a nice contrast between the patina section and the little buildings. One little trick I like to do too is that you can actually buff up the patina by using a green radial. They're very fine, so fine that they don't really remove the patina very well. So I just have to open this up a little bit more. And 
we can add a little luster to the gunmetal patina in the back. It just seems to give it a nicer overall tone. If you've overflowed solder onto, say, copper, and you want to get back to the copper, a good tool is the black silicone wheel. Another good one is the black pin polisher. So let's try this with the black silicone wheel. Back to copper. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. That's all for this time. Join us again at Beejucation for another great class.